What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to go over a k-means clustering example for health disease analysis. And we are also going to run an LLM model on top of it. So the process we are going to follow is this process you see down here. We're going to start with our raw data, which comes from a Kaggle competition over here, a UCI health disease data. And you can see all the columns and descriptions over here. Then we are going to go over our data pre-processing. So data cleaning, deduplication, scaling, and visualizing our data. Then we are going to go over data modeling and also run an unsupervised machine learning model, which is our k-means over here. So we're going to show the elbow method, we're going to show PCA, we're going to show k-means, and we are also going to run an LLM LAMA model in order to ask it to summarize our clusters. And then we are going to develop a Streamlit app and we are also going to develop a Power BI dashboard. The Streamlit app is this app you see over here, which is where we are deploying our k-means model. So let's say I am age, uh, let's say 33, then I have a 220 cholesterol. Uh, let's change something else. Let's do male. And then down here, if I click on cluster me, Based on what I've given the model, I belong to cluster two. So I can also read about the summary of my cluster over here. So cluster two, as you can see, and it gives me some information about my cluster. So this cluster summary is actually generated by our AI LLM model, and we're just displaying the answer over here in the Streamlit app. We also showcase our clusters, as you can see over here, and we have a cluster analysis table over here. The next thing we are going to do is that we are going to build this Power BI dashboard from scratch that has basically the same information as our Streamlit app. However, it doesn't allow you to make predictions, basically call your model and make predictions. Right, going back, and before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with step one, first you need to load all these libraries. So if you're missing any of these libraries, then type in pip install and then the name of the library, and that's going to install the library. Then we are just loading our raw data into data over here. The link to the raw data is over here, so you can go and download it. However, I'm also going to upload the raw data and this Python script in my GitHub page. It's gonna be in the link in the video description. Then I am just renaming num into her disease stage, and I'm just printing the first five rows. So this is our raw data over here. Right, going to the next step now, we are going through data pre-processing. So I have a function here that basically goes through each column in our data. Then it stores the unique values into these unique values over here. Then it counts the length of those unique values. So basically how many unique values we have in each column and it stores it into the numeric underscore values. And then if we have less or equal to 12 values, I actually want to see those unique values. So I'm printing the column, the length, and also the unique values themselves. And if not, if I have more than 12, so way too many unique values, then I'm just printing the column and the length. So as you can see, if we run this, actually let me run them because I need to run this. There we go. Now I need to run this. There we go. You can see that we have 920 IDs in the first column, which is this column over here. It's just a unique ID column. Then we have 50 different ages. We have two sex, which is male and female. We have four data set, which is this data set you see over here. We have four CP. We have 62 TREP, 218 cholesterol, etc., etc. So this is helping us get a good idea about our data set. Next, I am checking for null values. So if I run this quickly, you can see that we have a lot of columns that have a lot of null values. So what we are going to do with the null values is that for the numeric columns, we are going to use the median. And then for the categorical columns, we are going to use the mode. So the one that has been used the most. 
So first I am storing all of my numerical columns into these numerical columns. So this has the column names. And then over here, I'm just filling an A with the median of that column. So if I run this quickly to show you, and then I create another one, you can see these are just the column names and it's all the numeric columns. And down here, I'm just selecting the categorical columns. It's the same thing. So if I run it, you can see these are the categorical columns. And then down here, I am filling an A, the categorical columns with the mod. So if I check again for NAs, if I delete this and I rerun this one over here, you can see that we don't have any other null values. Right, moving on, we have the data cleaning over here. I am just dropping ID because I don't need it. It's just a number per row. And then I am turning my categorical variables into numeric representation. So instead of saying uh, female or male, we are going to create new columns sex underscore female and we're going to have zero or one depending if it's a male or female so if i run it quickly and show you how it works so if i run it and then we visualize our new data frame you can see for example for the sex we have sex female sex male true or false same thing for all of our categorical columns and the reason we do this is so we have a data frame which only has numbers that we can apply calculations on it. That's why we do it. And the last thing we do is that we standardize our numerical features. So we have zero mean and a unit variance. Right, the next thing we do is that we are using the elbow method in order to identify how many k's or clusters we are going to use in our final k-means model. Now, inertia is basically measuring the sum of square distances and it helps us evaluate the quality of our cluster. So the lower inertia is, the better our clusters are, the more cohesive they are. And the elbow method, it basically identifies the optimal number of clusters. So first you have to run k-means with a lot of different clusters. In our case, we are running k-means 11 times. We start with one cluster all the way to 11 clusters. And then we need to choose the number of clusters where inertia is flattening up. In our case, I have only used 10 clusters, but if we do 30, for example, over here, and then we visualize it, you can see that, let's say after 10, maybe it flattens up. However, I am not gonna use 10 clusters. I am only gonna use five clusters. And I'm also going to use some knowledge I have about the data. And the knowledge is that if we read over here, the num, which is the target column, which is the health disease stages, actually has five different options or targets, let's say. Zero, which is no heart disease, and then one, two, three, and four. So I want to run k-means with five clusters and identify what are the similar characteristics in each one of those clusters. So if I go back and explain the code quickly, I initialize my empty inertia list, then I set up my range 1 to 30, and then I'm creating a for loop where I run k-means per cluster, so 30 different times, then I feed my k-means model, and then I store my inertia, and down here I'm just plotting inertia and number of clusters. Another way now of identifying how many clusters you have or how many groups with similar characteristics you have in your data set is the dentogram. And over here, I'm just plotting my scale features into this dentogram. And the way you should read this is that you have two main groups, the blue ones. Then within the two main groups, you also have another one, two, three, four different groups and then within those four different groups you have one two three four five six different groups so that's how you can read the dentogram however as i have explained before we are going to use only five different clusters which is basically our next step we are going to run our k-means we are going to say five clusters based on our elbow and dentogram analysis we are going to 
initialize our k-means we're going to set the optimal clusters to five as we said and then we are going to predict on our scale features and we are going to store that in our cluster so if i run this quickly you can see that for each row we have a prediction which is basically our cluster so the first row is cluster one the second row is cluster two third row is cluster two the third and the fourth are cluster zero our next step now is to run principal component analysis which is basically a dimensionality reduction process so when we say dimensionality reduction we mean that we have 34 columns that have 100% variance. However, we are going to try and reduce the number of columns we have, and we are going to create new Eigen vectors or principal components, which is how they are called, that are going to be less than 34 vectors, but they are going to keep most of the variance. And the reason we do this is so that we can actually plot our clusters. So going through the code quickly, first we initialize our principal component model, then we feed it, then we store the cumulative sum of explained variance into this explained variance, and then we are plotting our explained variance with the number of components. So in most models, people choose the number of components that explain about 95% of our variance, which is what I have over here. So with about 20 components, 20 vectors, we explain 95% of the variance in our data set. And the first two components, if you see over here, which we are going to visualize later on, only explain about, I'm going to say, almost 30% of our variance. So if I scroll a bit down, you can see over here that I'm only selecting the first two components or Eigen vectors or principal components. They are all the same thing. And I'm plotting them into this scatter plot you see down here. So if we count the number of clusters we have now, you can see that we have one, two, three, for five clusters. This is a two-dimensional plot and we are only explaining about 30% of our variance with these two components you see over here. We cannot really plot, let's say, all 20 of them because we cannot have a chart with 20 dimensions. However, it gives us a good idea on how our clusters look. Right, moving on, the next step now is to analyze our results. So what I'm going to do now is that for our numeric columns so let me quickly uh, visualize this to show you uh, dot uh, head for our numeric columns like age or this uh, cholesterol or any of the numbers we are going to use the mean per cluster which is what i'm doing over here first i specify the numeric columns over here i specify the categorical columns however i'm excluding cluster because i'm going to aggregate by cluster for the numerical columns i'm going to average them so dot mean by cluster and over here i'm just reordering and then for the categorical aggregation, I am going to count the number of values that each column has per cluster. And then I'm going to join them back into a single data frame. And then I am going to combine the numerical with categorical summaries. So if I run this quickly, what this is telling us that cluster zero has an average age of 48 versus the average age for cluster one, which is 59, etc., etc. And then for our categorical columns, you can see that sex female for cluster zero, we have about 140. And then for sex male, cluster zero, 180. And we repeat this exercise for all of our categorical columns and all of our clusters. The next thing we want to do now is to somehow summarize all of this table using natural language. And the way to do this is that we are going to call 
an LLM which is going to be Meta's Llama LLM from Grok API, feed it this table over here and then ask it to summarize that table. So what you need to do first is that you need to initialize the client. So over here, you need to paste your API key. If you don't have one, you can go over to Grok website and create one. It's actually free and there is a selection of models you can use. I think I have the link down here and then I also have an LLM Grok tutorial over here if you want to really understand LLMs. Then I am converting my data frame, which is this data frame into JSON so I can actually feed it to the LLM. Then I'm defining my prompt, which basically says summarize the following data. Specifically, I want a summary per cluster with the main characteristics and statistic that each cluster has. The column cluster already exists and it has five clusters, zero to four. Column num is an important column as it has the heart rate disease stages zero equals no heart disease and then all the stages actually i think i have renamed column num so over here we should say column where is it column heart rate disease this one stage is an important one so if i come uh, where is it uh, over here and then i should say column and then put this over here it's an important column right Next, we need to define the model we are going to use. So we are going to use Llama 3.18 billion. Then we are going to run our chart completion, which we basically pass the prompt and also the model name. Over here, we are going to print the answer. And over here, we are going to store the answer into cluster summaries. So if we run this quickly, we get an error. What's the error? Let's check see connection error let's rerun it again okay i'm a bit stupid because first i have to pass my api key that's why i get the connection error so i'm going to copy paste it and come back again so i have pasted my api key over here i click run and then i comment it out so if we check let me rerun it so you can see it works there we go so if you check the results now it gives us a summary of zero cluster a summary of cluster one Cluster 2, 3, and 4, which is basically exactly what we've asked the model to do. The next step now is to export our model results and data so we can actually build the Streamlit app and the Power BI file. So first I'm storing our k-means model using Pigol. Then I am storing our scaler because as soon as we gather all the inputs from the Streamlit app, then we are going to scale them and then we are going to pass them back into our model. Next, I am storing the cluster summaries into a Pigol file, which is basically these cluster summaries you see over here, the actual text. Uh, next, I am storing our first two components in a data frame so we can actually visualize the clusters, which is over here. This is the save to Excel. Then I am storing our cluster analysis data frame, which is what we're going to display over here in the cluster analysis table and also over here in the Power BI file. Uh, next, go back. Next, I am, uh, what am I doing here? I'm exporting the main data set with the predictions. So I'm going to use this file in Power BI. And the last thing I do is that I am exporting the cluster summaries again but this time it's gonna be a text, so I can actually use it in Power BI and not in Streamlit. Right, the next steps now is to create the Streamlit app, which is this app you see over here, where we are going to deploy our model. And then the next thing is to create the Power BI dashboard, which is where we're gonna have our analysis. However, I'm going to leave these two things in the next two videos. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you've gained enough value out of it. If you feel like you did, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos.